I feel deeply honored to have the possibility of delivering a talk okay. <laughs> <laughs> after three years. And, oh, and today I'm going to talk about um, joint work with Richard Lena from Linz. And the talk is actually split into two parts. The first one is about uh, general motivations for studying. Um, operators and, and ideals of operators on balance spaces, then we will uh, actually move our attention to the class that we collectively call stopping time spaces uh, with some examples um, defined initially by Pesco Rosenthal. We extend that class quite naturally to uh, the class of Banach spaces that have unconditional basis. So um, because having an unconditional basis well means that the spaces of Banach lattice at the same time, actually, some of the arguments are inherently Banach lattice theoretical, though maybe there will be no, um, maybe no time to discuss them in details. But um, there is this Banach lattice flavor in the class of space. I'm going to introduce this class and um, actually explain some further results in that area. So let me start with, with, with something that is, I'm, I'm very happy to return to because I haven't quite worked in this area for a couple of years, namely the the classification of maximal ideals that algebras of, of operates in Banach space. So let us start with, with some notation and, and, uh, and simple facts. So B of X will be the Banach algebra or banded operators in a given space. And in general, you could say that well, one would like to understand the, the, the lattice of all closed um, ideals um, of that. But in general, it's a very difficult task. But actually, this is an isomorphic rather than isometric problem because either high classically proves that um, two Banach spaces or more spaces even are isomorphic even in the, no, let's say Banach spaces are isomorphic even in the, um, the algebras of banded operators are isomorphic as rings. Uh, and since those homomorphisms are automatically continuous, it's the same to say the isomorphic as Banach algebras. But um, the full classification exists in a rather uh, narrow, uh, for a rather narrow class of, of spaces. Well, the first result we can attribute to John Culkin from the 40s and um, who did it for the infinite dimensional separable Hilbert space. And this has been extended to, let's say, the classical, uh, the classical, um, maybe infinite, maybe, maybe let's say, uh, non separable sequence spaces. And there, the, the, the lattice of ideals, the ideals correspond to cardinals below. Um, below, let's say, the, the density um, of the space. Well, for, for various, um, but, but only for, for, for a very limited uh, number of cases, where, or two actually, here we have two results for infinite sums of finite dimensional spaces. And now, uh, well, we can add to this list some uh, maybe exotic from some perspective CK spaces. Uh, the first one, let's say, was constructed by George Kashmir, but under CH, and I guess Niels is going to talk about um, uh, a new version where this uh, assumption of the continuum hypothesis was removed. But you can say that, okay, this is maybe a tailor made um, example of a space for which we know the, uh, the full classification. And of course, the Argeris Hayden space opened a, a gate to the zoo of whole, to the zoo of examples, so that um, by, by refining the construction, you can actually get uh, more and more examples but um, they are they are very exotic but then um, in this case in, in, in most of these cases maybe excluding um, maybe excluding let's say the, the examples from the uh, from the from the last clause um, well we have the situation where you have actually um, this lattice of ideals has a has a unique uh, maximal ideal this need not be the case of course, you can you can construct a, a simple example such as uh, LP plus LQ. Well, these spaces are uh, incompatible, so it is not surprising that you should see two maximal ideals corresponding to the to the summons. But actually, again, um, it, it, well, you, you can actually do, do do better and find some peculiar examples. And with Neil, we have an example of well built out of the Argyron Hayden space, which is actually the space plus a suitably chosen subspace where this um, lattice has precisely six um, elements. So I guess this was the first example of a space where 
all the APU were, oh, maybe it was not first. Well, no, okay. But okay, I take it back. But I, 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 at least it is sim but at least it is finite. So um, you, you can see that um, it may happen that you have two ideals you can have. You can uh, string together LP spaces and have infinitely many maximal ideals. But um, today I would like to seek uh, um, classes of spaces that behave nicely in that regard. So in that it, it means that there is some uh, something similar to being primary in the in the nature. So uh, I would say this is uh, maybe a bold statement, but um, that this behavior, at least among classical spaces or classically definable spaces, is rather rare. So um, I would like to today to 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 ponder on this set of operators through which the identity operator does not factor. So I guess this uh, was first distilled by uh, by Deathling Dosef and Bill Johnson in their papers in their paper on uh, commutators on LP, I guess. But um, there is a very simple linear algebra uh, observation is that this set is certainly closed under multiplication from any side, but um, it, is, it need not be closed under addition. But once it is, it is automatically the, the unique uh, maximal ideal of the algebra of bounded linear operators. So today um, I would like to, uh, and in general, when you face, let's say the problem of of identifying um, this set as the unique maximal ideal, you kind of, in most, let's say, cases, you don't really try to show from the very definition that it's closed under the addition, you simply identify that it is equal to something else about which you know is closed under the addition. So actually, the, this, this set is closed under the addition, under addition for a list of uh, classical spaces that include uh, LP spaces, um, um, L infinity, L infinity mod zero uh, spaces and the space of countably supported functions. Um, you have now more room to maneuver with the C naught and LP sums uh, for various Lorentz sequence spaces, all its spaces, uh, and, and, and the list goes on. So I didn't really bother to, be, to aim at, at completeness here. But um, in most <coughs> cases, as far as I can tell, as I said, you don't really, uh, you don't really prove it from the, from the very definition. It, it usually comes as a byproduct to, to something else. Uh, and today I would like to find and, uh, and discuss some sufficient criteria for a space, for a basis of the space, where you have actually, um, you have this, uh, you can conclude that M of X is closed under addition. So um, that was kind of a part of the concern containing the motivation about um, ideals and now we are we are can, we are actually moving to the business of the so-called stopping time spaces but before we do so uh, let me use this occasion for a shameless um, advertisement of a conference <laughs> in Krakow in September, in September that I'm happy actually to co-organize not only the conference but also with Niels and Kevin we, we organize a, a special session essentially a panel uh, that might be of interest to to you, and actually, that's not the only one related more or less to Banach spaces. So, I encourage you to visit the website and see if you find it uh, interesting. So, a conference in Krakow in, in September this year. Okay, that's the end for the, for the advertisement, and let us go to the stopping time spaces. So, before I tell you what a stopping time space is. Um, I can tell you, I, I will tell you what it does or what properties it, 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 it has or maybe it doesn't have. So let me start with this motivation that among the, the classical band spaces, capital L1 and continuous functions on the unit interval slightly misbehave because they don't have an unconditional basis. Actually, they don't even embed into a space with an uh, unconditional basis. But they are nice and we would like to, 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 to work with them. So. Um, actually, Haskell Rosenthal noticed uh, in an unpublished uh, manuscript that you can um, that you can actually uh, get an unconditional basis in an object that behaves very much like capital L one, as long as you um, allow yourself kind of more randomness. So not only not only you 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 think of L one as the space of let's say random variables. But um, if you if you if you consider a space of, of, uh, of um, certain stochastic processes, then actually there is a chance of getting some that, that actually is 
chance of getting a space that has an um, unconditional basis. So um, that was the first example. We'll turn it S1 um, because um, it will it will in many ways um, resemble uh, capital L1. And I would like, well, I think of this as an analog of, of capital L1, but really it is an capital, it is an analog of the space of, of, of integrable functions on the on the counter group with respect to the to the to the harm measure. So the product of coin tosses, even though these spaces are isometric as one of places, but this 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 use of our counter set um, and will be will be quite extensive during the talk. So uh, and likewise um, this space actually comes in tandem with a space that um, has Kell Rosenthal denoted by B. And this space will, will resemble the space of continuous functions and will also have um, an, un an unconditional basis. So, um, uh, Buhler considered uh, a kind of a complexification that now we call S2 uh, because it fits nicely in the scale. It, it, it is not a Hilbert space, but um, it is more or less in the same place on the scale where, let's say, L2 is between L1 and L infinity. Um, so she proves that um, LP does not really uh, embed in that space for P between one and, and, and two. So actually there is a broader scale of spaces uh, where you can guess it is indexed by P. Um, so so uh, Gideon Sheshman proved that, for example, S1 uh, contains isometric copies of all LPs, which is a difference because for capital L1, you can only have um, LP for, for P at most two, um, and more generally that SP contains isometric copies of LQ as long as Q is at least, uh, at least P. Okay, so we know more or less um, what are the possible resemblances with, 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 with LP spaces, but we need to know what they are. Uh -huh. And um, actually, uh, some, uh, it, it is possible to prove that uh, in S1, you will find quite a lot of um, foliage spaces. Um, okay, so again, before I tell you, um, before I tell you what it is, um, I'd like to advertise a, a paper from Studia. I guess it was published six years ago by Apple Cities, who studied operators um, from a space with an unconditional basis um, into, let's say, S one, and he proved that we have the analog. Okay, that the space is complementably homogeneous in the sense that if you can find a copy of S1 inside of S1, then you will find a further complemented copy, then you will find a further copy that is uh, complemented. Um, and also, uh, if you have an operator that is banded below on a copy of S1 from whatever space, um, then you can factor the identity on S1 um, through C. And also, it is, it is not only is it primary, but um, it is kind of like infinitely primary in the sense that if you write down S1 as a one sum of a sequence of Banach spaces, then at least someone has to be isomorphic to S1. In particular, you can do it for, for two spaces and you, and you get a primarity. So in this sense, uh, this very much resembles um, a capital L1 because more or less what I wrote here is either, well, it's a, it's a, it's a corollary to uh, a result by Enfler and Starberg who proved that for, for capital um, L1. So indeed, there is a strong uh, resemblance between the two, and we will see in a moment how to actually how to model uh, actually a kind of a scale of spaces between L1 and S1. So um, for a moment, I'll be I'll be using let's say probabilistic language, and then we'll translate everything into uh, bases and Banach spaces, so we'll abandon all the all the um, probabilistic terms. But if you start with a filtration on a let's say probability space and increasing family of sigma algebra, then well, it's a recap from, from, from let's say stochastic uh, processes, then a process is adapted to the filtration. Well, whenever the relevant random variables are measurable with respect to relevant elements of the, of the filtration. So X can is F and measurable. And well, we define what a stopping time is. So this is a, it's a, it's a random variable that takes values well, in, in the um, in the um, index set, possibly uh, enlarged by infinity, 
Um, so that the event that um, T uh, takes value n is at n measurable. So um, if, you, if you study stochastic processes, this is uh, one of the, the basic terms. So let us denote by T the family of all stopping times uh, with respect to a given uh, filtration. So, well, you, this was the original definition uh, proposed by Rosenthal. So uh, what you do, you take all the let's say discrete with discrete time stochastic processes um, that vanish at some point so kind of like a, a counterpart of being finitely supported um, and you, you so eventually not um, processes that, 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 that let's say are p integrable in the following sense so you you compute uh, you compute kind of like this to lp norm but before you take the, the root uh, you range overall stopping times so, well, you can guess that if you take the, 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 the trivial filtration, you will uh, recover LP spaces because you will simply have this. Um, so no stopping times, yes. Um, and then you can play with the filtrations and you have uh, a whole class of you know, spaces. But actually, uh, from the point of view of Banach space theory, there are only two uh, relevant Separable LP space, infinite dimensional LP spaces, namely little LP and capital LP. And um, here, and actually, and, and among, let's say, uh, atomless probability measures, um, only, let's say, the, the Lebesgue measure, the unit interval, is, uh, is important because by rather nicotine, you can reduce everything either to the unit interval or, or if you prefer, let's say, to the counter set with the, uh, with the coin test measure. So from our point of view, uh, this this phenomenon actually is also available, and we will make use of it. That only let's say that the, the, the dyadic tree filtration will be relevant because any other filtration uh, that is related to to, to atomless probability measures will be reducible to this one. So it is not really a loss of generality to to forget about the filtration and, and fix the uh, the dyadic tree filtration generated by increasing families of, um, of dyadic intervals and, and work with it. So in a sense, that's the only filtration that will be that will be useful from the Banach space setting. Okay, so we have this, it looks complicated, and in Banach space theory, we probably would welcome uh, something more tangible from my point of view. So there is a possibility of, of actually uh, completely re, uh, redefining equivalently the, the those spaces. Um, so actually, the main theme of this talk will be the, 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 the Rademacher functions, the Haar basis. The Haar basis of L, capital LP is unconditional. In L1, it is not. But um, what we will prove that essentially, if you have a space that is, in some sense, defined in terms of the Haar basis, then very likely our results will be applicable. And indeed, the stopping time spaces are defined in terms of the of, of the of the Haar system, so uh, so so that's that's not really a, a coincidence, and that's why we we really want to uh, use the dyadic tree filtration, which which comes from the from the Cantor set, from the divisions of the Cantor set. Also, the Haar basis on the on the on the can C of the Cantor set is a basis, but not unconditional. Okay, so it turns out that you can do it. Uh, that you can do it um, in, a, in a language that is more friendly. So um, we will be uh, working with, with short bases that are indexed by the binary tree. So in particular, the, uh, the, the Haar basis has a natural ordering in terms of the, uh, of the, of the binary uh, tree. So the space B that is supposed to resemble the space of continuous functions um, is defined, well, could be, uh, could be identified as the space with a minimal one unconditional basis that dominates the hard basis in the continuous functions on the, on the Cantor set. So what you could do, you could now work with finitely supported um, uh, vectors on, on the dyadic tree, and then you, you compute the norm of in, in let's say the space of continuous functions, but then you, you alternate the signs and then you take the supremum and you only consider those for which the supremum is finite and essentially that will be your space when you pass to the, uh, to the completion. So it, it looks quite natural. So 
for instance, if you're familiar with the with the Perchinsky space, it is a similar it is a similar trick how to define the, the Perchinsky's universal the universal state. But actually, there is a better picture of it. You can forget about continuous functions. You can actually compute the norm in L1, but not for every subset. So uh, the norm in B may be identified as a, as the supremum over the L1 norms with respect to the branches of the tree, of the dynamic tree. So uh, that's actually quite nice to compute. And likewise, the SP is like computing the LP norm, but with respect to antichains. So for instance, well, if you think of, uh, of let's say, continuous functions uh, on the Cantor set nicely acting as functionals on capital L1, of course, it is not the whole dual space, but but uh, but some significant chunk of it, then here we have exactly, well, we have a reminiscence of this here, and actually this is reflected by this duality between branches and antichains. So, um, so here actually, um, B will be kind of like a local dual of, 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 of S1, like the continuous functions are kind of like local dual of, of, of capital L1. Okay. And what is important is that the standard unit vector basis becomes uh, one unconditional in, in SP. Okay, so in, in that way, we kind of recover um, the, um, the SP construction, but we can actually go further and, um, and actually redefine it for, for, for a wider class of spaces um, in which you compute the, uh, those, those uh, norms. Okay, so uh, some, some notation that by ET star we will, will denote the coordinate functions associated to the, um, to the basis. So in particular, uh, B, as I said, B may be identified with a, with a, subset, with a subspace of the, of the dual that we will call B. Okay, so let us read it in the general case. Uh, so uh, this was our idea actually to uh, uh, to, to follow this scheme and take a space with a one subsymmetric basis. This one subsymmetry, uh, I will recall this notion, but uh, it's kind of like a minimal working um, set of assumptions that will, that will actually allow us to um, redo certain um, arguments. And it's also not that uh, restrictive uh, as, a, as a kind of like a base space for us. And we will consider, well, um, taking the suprema over the norms of the projections over, let's say here, uh, over antichains and on branches. So in that case, for every space E with an unconditioned, with a subsymmetric basis, well, we can get those pairs of SE and, and BE um, defined uh, previously. So um, for instance, if you, if you just plug in the L1 norm, you, you, recover, you recover B, but you can, uh, do it with, with all sorts of spaces with one subsymmetric uh, base. So, um, so, so again, we will have this ET indexed by the dyadic tree to be the, uh, let us call it the standard sharded basis. Uh, we will denote the, the coordinate functionals by F mostly and then, um, and, and yes. So, uh, so in order to state the result, um, we want actually, as I said, um, our results are applicable to all sorts of spaces that are, vaguely speaking, um, defined in terms of the Haas system. In particular, to non separable spaces where you don't really have a notion of a, of a shallow basis, yes? But very often you have a, 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 another notion of a basis, like L infinity, yes? Little L infinity has a shallow basis with respect to the weak star topology. So actually, if we allow ourselves to, to extend the notion of a basis to that setting, um, it will still work. So uh, let us, let us uh, fix some dual pair of Banach spaces. In that setting, we, we also define what does it mean to be orthogonal. It's, it's completely natural. Um, but um, I, what I call the basis, if it, if it is like a basis, so the unique series expansion, with respect um, to the to the topology of the of the dual pair, yes. So, and an interesting tip that is that um, the weak topology actually recovers the the, the 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 notion of the shallow basis by Maslow's theorem that that if you have a basis that is a 
basis with respect to the weak topology that is also a basis uh, with respect to the norm topology. And likewise, you have the weak start shot basis and so on. Um, let us well, uh, recall some, some classical notions from basis theory that one sequence is, is C dominated by another sequence. If let's say for all um, scalar sequences, uh, we have the convergence of one series uh, defined in terms of, of psi n implies the convergence in terms of, of a n, and we have this uniform bound on the uh, on the on the um, on the norm of the series that depends only on this multiplicative concept. So this is standard, and um, if if they if you have domination in both uh, directions, C equivalence. Okay, so that was just to. Uh, to, to recall some notions in that setting. And now let me recall the notion of being one it's symmetric. So a space, and here we are working actually with space with bases that are unconditional. So the order, so the, 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 the order of convergence does not really matter. And that's why um, I, I took the liberty of, of indexing my Schalber basis with respect to the, uh, to the diary three. Um, so one unconditional is that if alternating the the, the, the science, you know, any vector does not really change the, uh, does not really increase the, the norm. Um, and one spreading, if it is one equivalent to, to all increasing um, you know, subsequences. So that um, it's like in LP, yes, if when, when you take a, a sequence in LP, uh, well, a, a subsequence of the standard unit vector basis then what you get is essentially LP space. So uh, that's what, what it means to be one spreading and one subsymmetric means being one unconditional and one spreading at the same time. Okay, so we will be, so, so a space with a one subsymmetric basis, you can think of it as, as, a, as a very uh, well-behaved space and we will be using as this base object for our, for our construction. Okay, and now uh, comes the, uh, the, 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 the issue related actually to um, to the uh, to the question of interest, namely to the closeness of this MX set under addition, namely the issue of factory the um, identity in the space. So suppose that you have a space with uh, with some shorter bases, let's say it's long last. And now, well, it would be very tempting to see that if let's say if your operator is kind of large on the diagonal, yes. So if you compute uh, if you compute, let's say, the values of your operators on the on the basis elements, and you head with the coordinate functional, so if this is bounded away from zero, it would be very uh, tempting actually to see to, to say that um, this operator uh, should factor the identity so that you have some amount of invertibility. But um, this is not the case, as everything in my space theory can go wrong. It, it goes wrong here because of, of Gary's space, uh, and this is nicely explained in the paper by Niels, Ricard, and Paul Muller. So, so the, the, the answer is no. But we are in a, in a very nicely defined class of spaces, so we hope for a positive answer, and indeed uh, that this would be so. So uh, in our work, we derive a positive answer to all sorts of spaces. Um, I'm not going to, to, to discuss the definitions, but some of them are related are, are defined in terms of the hard basis, and it's definitely not a not a coincidence. So, like BMO and SL infinity and so on, and some some the other Harvey spaces. So, uh, so, 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 so you can actually expect positive answers in in let's say uh, uh, the class of spaces that avoids so those. Uh, uh, insights from the HI world, even though Gauss spaces as an international basis. Okay, so I need uh, one more piece of notation, so because I'm going to, uh, to to ask that question in the setting where I perhaps don't have shard basis at its post, or I'm, I'm, I'm having a, a dual pair will be just enough. So I need to, um, to to introduce what do I say, what would I mean by having this factorization property and uh, actually um, I, I would like to, uh, to to ask for something stronger namely that I have this but without the, the absolute value. So let's say that uh, that uh, we have the, uh, the, the this, 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 this basis this, this orthogonal system has the 
positive factorization property um, whenever, uh, if you have uh, an operator that is kind of bounded away from on the diagonal, from zero bounded away from zero on the diagonal, then it does not, um, then it does not belong to M of X, namely the identity factors through that operator. So th there is some uh, amount of invertibility available. Okay, and here we have another notion that we say that um, the system is almost annihilating for a set of operators. If, well, that's interesting, if for every T in that set and every eta, uh, well, you will find two sequences, one in X and, and the other in the dual, um, so that let's say Xn is dominated by the, by the basis of, of X, um, Yn is dominated by those coordinate functionals in the basis, um, and on one hand, um, X and Yn are well bounded away from zero, or let's say uh, at least one, whereas we, it could be arranged that the supremum is, is, at, most, um, is at most eta when you get X and um, with, an, with an operator. So this, this, this is what we understand they being almost annihilated. And we have, and we have a first general result which looks very nice because you don't have too many exotic assumptions. Uh, and, it, and I believe that's the first result that gives some sufficient condition for the set M of X to be closed in the addition. The problem with this is that it's not really applicable. It's hardly applicable, but let's understand, let's try to understand what does it say. So we have, we have a dual pair of N spaces and well, um, EN is a basis. We have to think of EN as a shorter basis and FN as the coordinate functionals. And suppose that, that there is some C, that this is kind of like this norming behavior, so that uh, when you compute the supremum over the, 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 the kind of unit ball in the dual, then you are banded away um, from zero here, the kind of natural condition. And now comes the, uh, comes the conclusion that as long as you can guarantee that uh, the set is almost annihilating for this, for this set M of X, and we have the positive factorization property at disposal, then we are happy to, to, to conclude that M is unique, uh, so that M, M of X is, the, is, is closed under addition. So it is the unique maximal ideal. The problem is that we are assuming something very strong on this set M of X. But nonetheless, let me maybe present the idea for the proof because even though we don't use directly this result to make a conclusion about, uh, uh, let's say the stopping time spaces, we perceive it as a kind of intermediate step. And the, the idea of the proof that, that gives what we want is, is, is very similar, but more technical. So, um, and I, I suppose I have time to present the argument, which is not difficult because this assumption is very strong. Nonetheless, I believe that the first uh, general condition uh, for closeness of M of X under addition. Okay, so let's try to follow the proof. And so, well, we, we fix eta. So this is this, um, this is this number that is supposed to uh, control the supremum of tx and tx uh, tx n over y n. Um, take an operator that is in m of x, an operator b, and let's say that um, s plus t uh, is not in uh, m of x. So we want to conclude that um, that t of x is not in in, in m of x. Okay, so uh, let's use the, the definition of M of X. We can factor the identity. So we find two operators, A and B, so that um, B of S plus T, uh, A is the identity. And this is why, this, that's why, because S plus T is not in M of X. So the identity factors through um, S plus T. Okay, but um, this set is closed under under multiplication from either side, so, and, and S is in M of X, uh, so B S A is in M of X as well. But we assume that we assume that this system is almost annihilating for M of X. So we do our duty and we take two sequences X N and, and Y N, uh, so that when you when you evaluate them against each other, this is big, but this is small. Okay, so this is B, but on the other hand, when we know what it is, this is the identity. So 
where we write down the formula for the identity and we estimate it by, uh, by eta plus, because uh, this is what eta was, was, was supposed to be for, and plus B, T, A, X, and Y. And now we can actually define explicitly um, operators, L and left and right operator, as linear extensions of the, let's say, prescriptions that you map EN to XN and you map FN to YN, and you can do it because you have this C domination. So it means that the kind of like formal, formal inclusion is, is continuous. So we can do it and we know actually even the bound for the norm. Okay, and then we, we, we define this cumbersome operator U to be uh, R star B D A L. Uh, so, so here we have to be a little bit more careful because we are working with dual pairs, uh, but, but, but actually we also have the notion of, of, of an adjoint and it works exactly like for the, let's say, a Banach space in its dual setting. So, so now if you compute the infimum of this, um, operator u for the basis, well, what you have, well, you have because of this, that um, this guy, Vta, is bounded below by one minus theta, eta. So uh, we have the positive, uh, and so, and, and so we have this, but since we assumed the positive uh, factorization property, u can't be in M of x because the identity factor is true. So T can't be either because it, because T uh, is is a is a um, factor in the definition of in the definition of U. So that's how we conclude that M of X is closed under addition, and we are happy because um, because M of X is a is a unique maximal um, ideal. Okay, but the problem with this is that um, it's very difficult to uh, in general to verify this assumption. That, M, that, that we had something that is almost annihilating for M of X. But as I said, more or less, the, the, this is the idea for, uh, for more refined results uh, that I'm going to mention now. And I'm going to state the result. I'm not going to, to tell you what this means, but I'm going to, to define something stronger that actually implies that. And this is what we use in the, in the proof. So, so I, I hope that you can actually pardon this, um, uh, this well, <laughs> being vague, and um, let's see what we've got. So this is the, the first, I would say, applicable number result. So again, we have a dual pair. We have, we have a basis with respect to the dual pairing, and we have the, the coordinate uh, uh, function. So well, well, we want, uh, sorry, and, and we have some basis. And it is enough to assume that, that we have biorthogonality. Again, we have this, this kind of norming type of, of assumption, which is natural. And now if we replace um, being annihilating by, by this strange condition, then we, we recover the result. So I'm going to tell you um, that there is a stronger notion that, uh, that works and it, in, and, and it implies being strategically supported. So this notion was defined uh, in the paper by Pavlos Montakis, Richard Lehner, Paul Miller, and Thomas Schumpre from, I don't know, two or three years ago. Um, so we are kind of using those ideas from the paper, but in our setting, the space is defined in terms of the R system. Okay, so uh, this, is a, this is slightly, uh, oh, it's an interesting game, maybe you'd like to play with me play with me after the after the talk. So suppose so what's the setting? So well we fix some number and we consider the following two player game that we will denote by ref x basis of C. So uh, the game is interesting because it's numbered by the elements of the um, it's indexed by the elements of the um, of the dyadic tree. And for every uh, for every t in the dynamic tree, there are two steps in the in the game. The first one is that player one chooses eta that wants to kill the operator uh, and a subspace of finite codimension and also a subspace of finite codimension in the dual that is a weak star closed. And the second player responds by choosing a finite subset of the dyadic tree. 
and uh, two sequences of, of non-negative reals, um, so that well, you know, the inner product is, is, is one, and then play, player one uh, chooses a sequence of, of sign changes uh, on that finite set. Okay, and we say that the that player two has uh, his winning strategy in that interesting game if he can force the following properties uh, to hold, namely that for every t uh, in the tree, well, if I take the following linear combinations, so I average over the time, uh, over the sign changes and the, the, the non-negative reals, and the same here, that I have two, uh, that I have the following, that the sequence bt becomes equivalent to the basis uh, with these constants. Again, the same happens on the level of the dual space. And for all t, um, well, we are close. We are close to that chosen finite subspace of finite co-dimension, and the same in the dual space. Um, so yes, that's that, that, that's what we call by having a winning strategy. Okay, so we say that the basis is. C strategically reproducible, and well, you, you, so this C corresponds really to the root C in this in this equivalence, and it turns out to be important. Um, if for every if for every eta, uh, the second player has a has a winning strategy. So this this kind of definition follows this this scheme this this whole scheme of of of, of coming of definitions uh, defined in terms of games of for Banach space for, for charge basis in uh, in Banach spaces. So it's not really a, a very novel idea, but it's, a, it's something that, that works uh, in this setting and it, it fits our framework of working with the R system, so working with the, with the Cantus of really. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm about to, uh, to, 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 to finish. So let me tell you more or less what was the hard work in the, in the paper. So, well, of course, the hard work was to, was to show that something is strategically reproducible, so that you need to verify this, um, you need to verify this, um, this definition, and then also conclude that, uh, that you can apply this to the, to the, let me say, first applicable theorem that I, I had mentioned. So, um, so yes, so for S, E, and B, E, uh, you, can, you can actually have it. Um, now, when you take, um, let's say uh, a conjugate uh, exponents, um, then you can show that the space LP and LQ has the positive factorization property. And once you have it, you can actually uh, recover some known results about that space. Um, and also another, another maybe uh, uh, challenging thing was to show uh, that we had this uh, this strategic being strategically supporting, which I which I haven't really defined for the for the LP of for the mixed LP space, right? But once we have this, well, we can conclude. I, I think it must have been known, but we couldn't locate it in the literature, so we can know the reference where to find it. That the the the, the algebra of operators in, on this mixed LP space has the unique maximal ideal. I will be grateful because we have it. From, from our theorem as a result, but we don't claim originality of this. It must have been it must have been known. And actually, uh, you know, the third main theorem is really a, a portmanteau result that, that 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 accumulates more or less a number of, of of mini results that we have in the paper. And it says that well, in that setting, well, M of X is the unique maximal ideal uh, in the following cases. Well. Here, as I mentioned, S, E, and B, E, but also uh, you can take those spaces and, and, and amplify them with, with LP sums, um, and it also works. Um, and here, also with the dual space, so we use the weak star charter basis, but here we have to be a little bit more careful, namely, we need to assume additionally that um, you don't really have, uh, um, you don't have too much comparison to. C zero when you pass to to anti chains in the tree. So I, I hope that this definition is more or less self explanatory. Um, but but also you can get something for the non separable states such as the duals. Um, and actually, what what is interesting 
is that you, you recover primarily for, um, for LP of these spaces, but not, not only for that, uh, I haven't really included it for some reason. Uh, you also recover primarily for mixed capital LP spaces. So this assumes there is all the keyword from uh, Journal of London, from, yes, from, from, yeah, from one of those elements journals. Um, many, many classical um, kind of mixed spaces uh, followed into that. Well, actually, uh, well, well the, the results followed from that. Um, framework. So um, I believe that this this, uh, this notion of having a, 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 a space defined in terms of some kind of concrete basis, maybe it could be pushed further to other, let's say, wavelets. And, 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 and it would be interesting to see for which wavelets we can um, have analogous results because um, it, on one hand, the, the hard web system was quite special here, and we really needed to work with the, with the hard system. But when, you, when we ponder on that, what was really important was this ordering that, that came with the that came with the with the counter set with the with the dyadic tree. Therefore, um, it is not inconceivable that um, we can aim at uh, analogous results for spaces for function spaces defined in terms of other. Um, for other wavelets. Okay, I think this is where I'd like to stop. This is a stopping time for my <laughs> talk. Thank you very much.